Okay, we're going to build a Keepra keyboard, split keyboard from, from a kit. Um, so this is version 2, and the first thing I'll do is identify all the components that we'll be assembling in this build. So these are our circuit boards, um, and they are reversible. So this would be for the left hand. If you put stuff, put your switches on this side, that's the right hand. So we have two, two blank circuit boards. We have two Raspberry Pi 2040 microcontrollers, um, and we'll be flashing firmware onto these to make it into a keyboard, and they'll get mounted here on the PCB. We have some tweezers that will help for the mounting the diodes. We have our soldering iron. We have some lead-free solder. Um, we have a small little jumper wire for some testing that we'll be doing. And we have our surface mount diodes. So every switch will get one of these. There's 44 total switches. They come in these little plastic dispenser packs. We have a USB cable for connecting the keyboard to the laptop. My laptop um, has an A connector, so this is for the laptop. The keyboard has a C connector. The TRS cable is what connects the two halves, and the, this is the TRRS jack that, goes, um, that these cables go with, that goes here on the PCB. And you also need a small breadboard for mounting the pin headers to the microcontroller. And that's all the parts we need to build this keyboard. Okay, so at the start, before we start assembling the build, we're going to put keyboard firmware on the microcontroller. And you want to do this first because uh, then you can know that everything is good and going to work as a keyboard, and we will test several times during the build to know that it's still good. Because if you don't do that, it's very easy to spend a lot of time and money and effort and components, get them all onto the board in a way that they cannot easily be removed and then realize it's not going to work at all and you plug it in and it does nothing. So that's why I start with flashing the microcontroller and testing the microcontroller. So to do that, um, we're going to hold down the left button and connect it USB-C and then when we release the button, it should mount as a USB drive on the laptop and the flashing is super easy. You just copy um, the UF2 file to the path, the root of where it, it's mounted. Um, and that's it, it unmounts itself and reconnects and now instead of being enough, an unprogrammed microcontroller, it's a keyboard. And if we put this jumper wire like in the second, um, the second to last hole on the left side and then touch some of the holes on the right side, it'll type. So there's X, C, B, So it's working as a keyboard, and if I move this to a different hole, I'll get different letters. There's S, B, B, S. So now we know that it's, it's working, and um, it's all flash. So if we build our keyboard right, we'll be able to like use it and be good to go. Okay, so now that we've flashed our microcontrollers, the next thing is we're going to solder these pin headers onto them. But, you know, these, these pin headers came with the microcontroller, so they have the same number, the number of pins and holes lines up. But uh, the circuit board has one less hole. So you see if we line this up, it's got one extra one. So we're just going to use our flush cutters to trim off one extra pin from each of these rows. And they have a little... Um, you know, a little divider line between each one. So I try to line up the flat part of my uh, flush cutters there. And the main thing here is that this, uh, they want to fly off when you, um, when you snip them. So I just hold my finger to make sure that I don't get poked in the eye if that thing flies off. So now we've got the right number of pins, and we are going to set these into our breadboard. And the way my breadboard lines up to get the right width apart, I do the second row on one side, I think. Is that right? Yeah, this, this, the third row on one side and the second row on the other side. 
and you just want to make sure they're all seated and that the they're all the same height which they should be but but they're not fixed if you if you press them down they will shift to different heights and then we're going to mount the microcontroller like that and the main thing here is that this the extra hole is the one on the the side with the USB C um, jack and so the pins will go all the way down into the bottom corners and you'll have the extra one at the top and so this is seated in our our breadboard now the th obviously the small end of the pin header is is what's poking out and the longer end is is down into the breadboard and then we're going to go ahead and solder this so i've got my soldering iron here ready to go i have this relatively new um angled tip where it's you know it's a very fine point and it's got this kind of penguin penguin head shape um, and i find that to be really easy to use um, especially for this project it's set to uh, 370 celsius um, for me so i'm going to go ahead and start these start soldering these pins the only thing here is you just want to make sure that um, the mcu is flush and not you don't press down and have one side a little high or anything like that so i'm mostly just watching for the solder to move and kind of naturally fall down next to the in the through hole next to the the pin header um, which it which happens naturally after one second or so and you can just see it happening um, and you know I'm not an expert I, I'm definitely self-taught and there are lots of videos on YouTube if you've never soldered anything they'll they'll teach you um, how to solder better than I can I think that last one needs a little more Now that's the right side done. And to the left side. I'm going to spin this around. I like to have the, the pins on my right and nothing, nothing to the right of the soldering iron. And I'm right, I'm right-handed. Okay, so I'm gonna look at these. They don't all look the same, but they look okay. Just make sure you didn't skip any. Actually, I think I, I did skip that one. Or at least I didn't quite put enough. I don't like how much is in this ground pin. I'm gonna put a little more. That should be okay. Everything looks good. So to get this out, I um, the main thing is it, it's easy to bend the pin headers. So um, I slide the back end of one of my tweezers fully fully underneath it, and then I can kind of pull up evenly from both the left and the right. And you know, kind of all four directions, I can kind of evenly, gently put some lift, and then that comes off without bending anything. 
Okay, so now that we've soldered the pin headers, we're going to plug this into the laptop again and confirm it still works. And this one has actually been giving me problems. So I'm glad that I'm testing this before we get it like soldered to the board. Um, what I can do is go to, on this Mac, I can go to Apple menu about this Mac, system report, and click on USB, and USB, and it should be listed here, uh, but it is not. Um, and if I go to just test whether it types by shorting pins, at the end of the board, I should see letters there, and I am not, and so I don't know what's going on. I don't think normally this would not fry it, but I either fried this or something, but it is just not reliably showing up as a keyboard anymore. I'm going to try the other one and see if that one works different. Okay, I'm going to put the pin headers on this second microcontroller because the first one is not working for me as a keyboard. So I am, I must have screwed up the soldering, but I'm going to trim these, trim the extra one off of here. Get these set up on my breadboard. That is the microcontroller, and let me start with the right side and solder this. Okay, so these are all soldered. I think. And next I'll test this and see if it still works. Okay, so this second microcontroller has now it's got its pin headers and if I start on like 
the second from the last pin on one side with a hex wrench and just short the other side. It should just type some letters. Doesn't matter what letters, but just you want to see that it's like powering on, registering as a keyboard, and able to send letters. Um, so now we know this one is good. I'm going to check the other one again and see if it's still giving me problems. All right, so this is the first one I did. I marked it with a question mark and some tape because it was bad. It was not working. So I just, I went and just reflowed all of these solders again, just to kind of touch them with my soldering iron, let it reliquify. I added a little solder if, if it looked skimpy. And I think it's better now. Um, it's now recognizing as a keyboard and typing some letters. So hopefully that was it, but that's why I do this and I do it in this order because I'm not an expert solder. And, you know, if I get this all the way soldered onto the board, I don't really want to have that question. Um, so now I'm like reasonably confident. The only other thing I have to do is like solder these pin headers into the board itself which is further away from all the components, less likely to burn anything. Um, and it's, it's relatively easy soldering. Even this is relatively easy soldering, but still it, it wasn't right. And I needed to, um, and I needed to redo it. Next, we're gonna solder the jumper pads um, on the PCB where the microcontroller mounts. And um, for this footprint that I'm using, we're gonna, we're going to connect the two um, rectangular jumpers that are on the bottom side, and then we're going to mount the MCU on the top side. So I have my sides labeled. I'm going to start with the bottom left. So I'm going to solder and connect these these jumpers, and we'll leave, we'll set the right right hand PCB aside. And all I can say is I've been having a real hard time with this. <laughs> Um, I've killed three PCBs so far, I think mostly due to uh, having my soldering iron a little bit too hot, and it's just tricky. So hopefully I don't ruin this one. I don't have that many spares left, um, but this is the bottom of the left hand, and we connect all of the pairs of little rectangle um, pads on this side. So. I did an experiment and um, with this tip on my soldering iron, um, which is like a penguin shape, 0.8, I, uh, 300 Celsius um, seems, seems okay. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to put flux on here with a Q-tip, which I don't always do, and actually I almost never seem to need it, but because I've been having so many problems with this, I'm just gonna put some flux on all of these. Supposedly, that will help with the oxidation. Um, but let's just start and see how it goes. Okay, didn't burn that one. It's a, it's a big circle blob and it's not shiny, but I think it's good. That one I think will be fine. It's not working at all. But 
First three were fine. I don't seem to be able to heat these pads though. Okay, that's better. Left pad is okay. Cut right pad doesn't want to heat. Okay, that one should be okay. I'm gonna stop and check with my multimeter. Let's see how these are. That's fine, so they're all, those are all connected. The ones that we haven't soldered yet should not be connected. Okay, so far so good. I'll keep going. Took a while, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, that looks like that worked and didn't use a huge amount of solder. Looks good. That looks good. So I'm basically trying to heat the left one, get solder on there, and just slide over to the right one, give it a second. And then when I remove the iron, I'm trying to go straight up. And I have a hard time, you know, my hands aren't very steady. So it's easy for me to like smear solder into some nearby component by accident. Like, sort of like that. Come on. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, sometimes I have to use my left hand to steady my right to lift it accurately. Ah, okay, so I'm going to need to solder sucker that because um, I filled that through hole. But I think these are all connected and not burnt. So now I'll confirm with the multimeter. I'm gonna leave the raw because that's um, um wait, maybe I didn't fill a through hole. Oh yeah, actually the through holes are clear. Yay, no solder sucker. Okay. Ground might be bad. Okay, I think they're all fine except ground, but I think if I just reflow it for a, for a second, I think it'll be working. Okay, I bet that I bet that fixed it. Okay, um, 
these are all good enough. I'm going to do the other side. So in the ideal case, I think that was excellent. I'm I'm pressing down pretty hard because this is a this is a fine point. And I need the heat to get onto the pad. And then hopping over to the other pad and pressing down to heat the other pad. And ideally that's all it is, but it's just not consistent what happens exactly with the solder. That one I don't think is good. E6, possibly no good. Okay, I'm gonna have three to touch up here. E0, come on, focus. Sorry about the autofocus. That one needs a touch up. E6. E7. All right, let's see if I can touch these up. This one, I think, just a reflow. E7 is okay now. That's still broken. I didn't didn't reflow P6 yet. I think it needs it though. This is still no good, I think. I'm going to try to get that pad. I think that fixed it. Yeah.
I think they're okay. Okay. I think they're done. Just going to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. All right, those are fine, I think. I think they'll be fine, but P16 has a little bit of a, a point to it. I'm gonna flush cutter that off, but uh, the, the ones that are kind of tall lumps, I'm just gonna leave there. I think they'll be fine. Just didn't want that sharp, sharp peak that might poke something. All right, so I want to get get the MCU mounted and get this to where we can test it as quickly as possible and make sure all these um, the pads are the jumper pads are working. So I'm going to put one diode on the switch, a switch that's closest to the MCU, which I, I think I can make type with just installing one switch. So I'm going to put uh, one diode there and, uh, and we'll mount the MCU and we'll mount a switch. And then in theory we could plug it in and type that one letter and know that um, all the all the jumpers are good. Some of these in our little bin. Pads. Okay. One diode. This part is hard to film because diodes are super tiny, but see how I can do here. So the um, the pad that the line is closer to or kind of the arrow points to you have to pay attention to and you want the line on the diode to align with that. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to see because this thing is so freaking tiny. Um, but this diode has like T4 on it and it has a line. So for the left bottom, they're going to be oriented this way so that the T is upside down. And the main thing is that it's not the same for the left and right halves. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. I can't, I can't film stuff this small with my setup. Um, the main thing to remember is the, the line has to line up with the symbol and that it's going to be different between the left hand and the right hand. But so when you do this whole bottom side, my diode, the text on my diode is going to be upside down from my perspective. And when we do the right hand, it'll be right side up. So I heat the pad, put solder on the right, on the far right pad, and then I use my tweezers to get a good, good solid hold of this, get it in position. And then I'll reflow, solder, liquefy the solder, slide it on there, slide it pretty far to the right so that the left, the left connector pad is, is where it needs to be. And then I'll just heat that. And put some solder there. And that should be fine. 
These are not not as hard as um, a jumper pad, but not as easy as switches. So that should be good. And now we'll mount the MCU on the on the top side of this. So now we're flipping the circuit board over. This side is still empty. This is the left top, and we're going to put the the microcontroller over here. So now this one just goes in the holes, and there's no no tricks here. There's every hole gets a um, pin header, and then I have some of these little standoffs that I just 3D printed that just give me clearance. Uh, they make special things for this for people who do electronics a lot, which I am not. So I'm just putting these spacers underneath so that this will sit all the way flush. Actually, I don't know why I'm doing that on this side because we're going to solder from the bottom. So the MCU is mounted to the top, but and then we have to flip it over to solder the, solder the pin headers. So then I'll put these spacers here and actually for this yeah this I'm just going to set it down so that the pressure um, keeps it flush and this this soldering is pretty straightforward relatively My penguin shape soldering tip kind of makes it easy to get the tip like right into the hole and then it's very stable, which is good. And then I'm just looking for the solder to, you can see it kind of slurp down and fill the, fill the whole perimeter of the hole and kind of go down into the hole. So that's what I'm looking for where there's no like air left around anywhere around the pin. All right, uh, right side is done, and we'll do the left side. Now I'm going to flip the board around. It's easiest for me to have the thing I'm soldering on the right with nothing else beyond it on the right, because I'm right-handed.
All right, so that's the pin headers. Um, and next we'll put a switch here and see if we can get this, this key to type. So for the switch, I've got one of my uh, ambient nocturnal 20 gram linear silent. So I'll just put that in there, um, and you just want to push firm and make sure it's, it's all the way in uh, before you solder it. But then I'm just going to solder the two switch pins, and then we'll test. All right, uh, I'll move this to the computer, see how it is. Okay, plug this in. Give it a second to register, and we get a T. Q W E R T. Types reliably. All good. Can't test everything, but this is a this is a great sign that um, this is going to work as a keyboard. Okay, so we got a successful test. Um, you know, all the soldering on the MCU and the jumper pads is good. We don't have to touch it anymore. The switch works. So the next thing I'll do is use my flush cutters to trim the excess off of these pin headers. This is pretty straightforward. The main thing I want to point out is that they, when you snip them, they really do want to fly away. Um, and so they're, they want to poke you in the eye. So safety glasses are good. And then the technique I use is, where's my toothbrush? Grab my toothbrush. Um, I use the back of a toothbrush. Which is, which is very much like a finger, but it's sacrificial. Um, so I just press you know, pretty firmly on the pin I'm going to clip so it won't, uh, won't fly away. And then I, then I clip it. And usually it, it ends up just poked into the bottom of the toothbrush handle. And then um, I can just tap it out and go to the next one. Okay, we'll trim these. You can see I'm pushing down pretty hard and the, the pin just ends up in there. So we can put all the diodes on the back. I'm going to first get rid of these 
and the headers. And then I use these little 3D printed standoff spacer discs. And then we can do the rest of the diodes. Um, the main thing here is being conscientious about the orientation. Make sure you get it all them all correct and um, but we'll work through this. I'll show you the first couple here. Well, I did one already, but um, now that we're kind of in production mode, we can do the right side pad. And we can just do a bunch of these. Um, a lot of people would do like all of these. I like to go slow and test because I've screwed up a lot. But I'll do this whole row. So a little dot of solder on the far side. And then I'm going to grab my diode, try to get it oriented with the right side up, and then if I can even see it, then make sure the, the line is on my right, the T is upside down, reflow this, slide the pin into there, or the lead. And take the heat off and, it, and the right leg is done and then you just do the other side. So I can, I can just barely see these, but I could tell that one was oriented wrong, so I just push it, and then I try to like get my tweezers onto the PCB, get them around it, and then squeeze them. And I bet more youthful people, this is probably easier for you. Okay. Um, the other thing that I sometimes screw up or it's good to remember is when you pull the heat off after doing the first leg, um, hold it, keep holding it in place with the tweezers um, so it doesn't, it doesn't move until the solder is solid again. And now that I'm using a lower temperature, it, it cools more quickly, but when I was building previous ones and I had the temperature kind of really hot, you would take a good second, second and a half before I could let go of the diode and know that it, um, it wasn't going to shift around. How are we doing? So that's the first row, or that's a row. Again, it's, it's really hard to see, but what I'm going to do now is just visually look and make sure they're all oriented the right way and that I got 
each one I soldered both sides of it I didn't forget any and um, and then I'll proceed and do the rest of them which I, which I probably won't film Okay, I've done two rows. I'm just going to check them with my multimeter. Um, I've got it set on the, the diode symbol setting, and I believe for these, the red lead goes on the left. So that beeps, and you can just use the through holes on this PCB. It's got through holes and surface mount for each diode that are you know connected so you can just probe these with the through holes which is easy and they're all beeping that's two rows just sanity check if we do one with no diode no beep so two rows done seems seems good Third row, that's all right.
All right, so that's the left-hand diodes. And now we can put some more switches in here. So here's the switches. These are my favorite switches. So these are the new, these are Kaiwa Chalk um, Ambience, the 20 gram linear nocturnal variety. Um, so what we can do, is we'll mount all of these now. And then we'll solder them.
All right. Should be done. And uh, don't have our TRRS in yet, but we can test. At this point, we should be able to test just this left side. And I recommend you do that. And we're going to do that. We're going to touch every switch and make sure they're all working. Because uh, it's, it's much better to find that out now when we can easily fix it than later on. All right, we're ready to test. I'm going to launch this program called um, Carabiner Events Viewer. Because I want to test the modifier keys as well as the letter keys. So I'll just plug this in. And we've got Q, W, D, R, T, A, S, B, F, G, Z, X, C, D, uh, B. And then this should be, that's left command. Option, Control, and Shift, and then this is not my key map. This is the default key map. Delete your backspace. Left Command, and that, oh, that's Shift. Yeah, no. So actually. I don't think this one is working. Um, it's just a little concerning. Now wait, here it goes. Oh, and we're getting some weird stuff. I think it is working, maybe? Yeah, okay. I think it's fine. I'll quit this thing. Just test, test it here. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's working as a shift key just fine. Okay, all the keys work. Okay, the final bit of soldering we need is this TRRS jack, um, which goes in here. So we mount that like this on the left side. And then we turn it over to solder it. Um, you can either tape it. Actually, I usually I've got a little um, spring clamp. I think works okay for this. Make sure I got it pretty flush. Okay, so it's seated, seated okay. It's pretty flush. This has four pins to solder. Okay, soldering is up to temperature. These four pins. Okay, now I can see our board is filled out. There's no more, uh, no more spots for stuff. We got our TRRS. Can't test it really until the uh, the other side is done. I mean, I guess you could test it with a multimeter, uh, but I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. It, but it's all very simple. It's just some four pins. Uh, so that's this half built and 
think I'll leave it like this and do the right half. Okay, we're gonna switch from the right from the left side to the right side. So it's basically the same process. Um but I am gonna film, I'm gonna try to film all of it just so I have it for the record. So I have the top side of my right hand PCB labeled, switches are gonna go here, hits my right. Um, so the bottom is where we're gonna solder our jumper pads. Okay, nothing needs any rework. That's good. I think my new preferred method is just put a small dab on the right side, not, not worry about connecting it, and then as I go to the left side, try to lean it so it connects. Okay, and just to confirm, the, the through hole should not be connected all the way across the MCU footprint. Okay, nothing needs any rework. That went about as well as I can do. There are a couple pointy ones, and I might flush cut them, but 
otherwise those that should be good all right let me cut a couple of these pointy ones Okay, that's good. All right, this is the other MCU that we prepared. This is the one that was questionable. I just tested it again, and I was able to type QWERT. I think we're it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna flip this over to the top side to just install this. Uh, then we can just set this down and solder the pin headers. MCU soldered. All right, I did a quick test off camera and shorting shorting some of these header pins it's still typing letters so this is the right side i'm going to go ahead and trim the uh, trim the pin headers Right. Pin headers all gone. I think we can now let's put the diodes on the back side of this. Okay, so this is the this is the right hand keyboard. We're on the bottom side, and the diode symbol is pointing to my left. So the we have to do the diodes pointing left on this side. So they're, the writing on my diodes is now going to be right side up, and the line is going to be to the left. And But first I'm going to put a drop of solder on the, on the near side of each of these pads. I guess I will put this up on these blocks. Okay, and I guess I'm feeling more confident, so I would probably just do all these diodes, but that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this video was to kind of convince people to 
test more frequently and, and go in small steps. I'm going to put a switch in here, on switch. And unfortunately in my testing, the, the switch pins don't really make contact when they're just mechanically installed. They, they need the solder. So I'm going to solder this one in. And I'll make sure it types. All right. Hopefully it is now typing. It is now not typing. Why is it not typing? There it goes. So something might be a little flaky. I think it has to do with the USB. So if I put a little pressure up, it seems to work. But without the pressure, it's busted. So I don't know if that's something I can fix on the MCU or it's the cable or what. But the right hand doesn't need to be plugged in because I'm going to power it through TRRS. So maybe it won't matter. But I would prefer if it was more reliable than that. All right, I'm going to I'm just going to proceed with these diodes. I'm not worry too much about the flakiness. Right, there's one row. I'm gonna look. If I was gonna mess up the direction, this would be a time. But it looks okay. I'm gonna go to the next row.
second row. All directions look good. I guess I'll do a quick multimeter. Let's see, I guess I would want red on the right, this side. Ten beeps. That's good. Third row's done. Alright, I'll put all the dots on. Next seven.
right, and I'll test them. Okay, it's oriented correctly, it just needs a reflow, I, I think. This is one of the ones that is a little persnickety. Put some more solder on the left side. Oh yeah. Fixed. All right, time for switches. Easier to look kind of at the, uh, the side plastic stems and make sure both of those are poking through.
All the switches are installed. And let's go check each one, make sure they're all good. All right, let's uh, fire up Carabiner Events Viewer. Hopefully this actually connects. You've got Q, W, E, R, T. First row is good. A, S, D, F, G. Second row is good. And you know, of course this is the right hand, but you're, you're getting letters that would be on the QWERTY left hand and that's just because of, of the split. This is, this is fine. When we connect them, this one will know that it's supposed to be the right hand. C, X, E, or C, B, E. Okay, three rows good. Command, Option, Control, Shift, Delete, Command, and this one is capital. Flag is left, Shift, yeah. Okay, all the switches are working and we can put the bottom plate on. All right, switches are working, uh, but we need to, we still need to do the TRRS before we put the bottom plate on. But our labels can come off. And for TRRS, The footprint's reversible, but it's kind of plug and play. You just line up the pins where they fit. Uh, if you try to do it wrong, I think it won't it won't fit. And I'm just gonna sit that on the breadboard for support. Just try to check that it's it's seated and not too far off angle. Obviously, it can only go a little bit off angle within the way of the, the pins and the through holes and we'll just solder it. and we will do the, uh, the bottom plate next I guess I should test them before we put the bottom plate I'll test them uh, connected the full keyboard all right I did I did plug them in with TRRS and USB and test every single key with both halves cooperating everything's good so I didn't see any issues didn't see any flakiness if there is subtle flakiness, it's you can't really notice it until you start typing, um, which I don't want to sit here and do a long typing test. Um, but all signs, all signs are good right now. So what I do next um, is I put a a bottom plate um, here, which is just. 3D printed, it's really thin. I forget the exact dimensions. It might, it's, I think it's less than two millimeters. But that just sits here and its purpose is to support the perimeter. And ideally it's, it's just barely tall enough to clear all the components um, and keep it as low profile as possible, but keep anything from scratching the desk. But then I also need something to keep it from sliding and to provide a little bit of shielding. So I've been using this shelf liner, which you can get at the hardware store, general store. It's it's pretty cheap, it's easy to work with. So I, um, we're gonna glue this 3D printed bottom plate to directly to the PCB. And that's why I kind of left um, a kind of lot of clearance around the perimeter 
on the PCB itself because I wanted a place to glue this. And then the way I do this is like this, there's a bumpier part and a smoother part and the bumpier part will be facing out, facing the desk and the smoother part will get glued to this. Um, and that that is, you know, it's pretty low profile and it, it provides shielding and it provides, uh, it keeps it stable on the desk, it won't slide around and it's, you know, it's lightweight, it's cheap, it's, it's easier to do and I think it's, you know, kind of pragmatic. So I've been happy with that. So that's, that's how I finish this off before we do like keycaps. Um, so the basic procedure is I use this as a, as a template. Oh no, I don't. Um, I just need to cut, I can cut this rough big enough. And then uh, after everything is glued, I'll use a razor to, um, to trim it up really nice. Um, so let me, let's get ready to do this part. This is the glue I've been using for this, this Gorilla Glue Mini Craft Glue. Um, it seems okay, but I can't talk for longevity because I've only had a few of these for a couple of months. Um, but definitely I know that just regular AC glue, um, super glue, hasn't done very well with the project I've used it, especially with 3D printing. So this seems okay. And the way this glue works is it wants um, one side to be a little bit damp and the other side to have glue. So it's important to like orient these um, to know which side gets the glue. And my, my camera setup here isn't really right for all this. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll see if I can move the camera higher. All right, that should be a little better. So the game plan here is um, I'll dip a, dip a Q-tip in a little bit of water and just go around the perimeter of the PCB to just put a little bit of moisture there for the glue. And I, I think just a tiny bit. Um, is fine. And then let's see, I'm gonna open this cap first. The thing about this glue, especially these, I like that the, uh, the tubes are really small, but um, they're a little bit hard to control. Uh, so I have, you have a lot of paper towel at hand to deal with the glue. Um, Sometimes it won't stop squeezing out when you're done. Let me just get this started. Tube seems to have a lot of air in it. Okay, so now you can see the yellow, the glue has a yellow color. It's coming. It's about ready. Um, all right, and then I just try to put a thin, thin strip around the perimeter of this. I, I try to aim for the inside. and not have too much so it doesn't spill out. So I'm trying to put a thin strip around the interior of the perimeter, but it's a little tricky, but not too bad. Okay, I think that's right. And then I'm just gonna put, I should have probably put these down already, but I have some paper towels to go below the glue up just to protect the surface and set this on there. And then just try to get this aligned nicely. I'll put a little pressure 
to help the glue get started. Check for alignment. You know, it's a nice fit, so you shouldn't really see any of the 3D printed part. If that's all aligned. And then I'll just put some weight on this. I've been using uh, filament boxes. So I'll put this camera's kind of in the way, so I would I would try to center this a little bit more normally. And I think nothing slid around. And what the heck? I'll just put a PCB way box on here. Thanks, PCB way. They're the sponsors of the circuit boards. It's fun. So I'll just let this, um, the glue says two hours to cure and 24 hours full. So I'll, I'll leave this for a while and then, um, and then do the, uh, the shelf liner bit. So to cut this shelf liner to size, I just have one of the travel cases just for reference. And uh, I just identify which of these lines um, is good enough so I'm, I have enough material and then I can just cut on the lines. And this doesn't have to be a clean cut. We're gonna we have excess that we'll trim off later. straight-ish straight, straight -ish line so it fits and then I can just cut a little extra that side and a little extra over here so now we've got our basic rectangles that we can glue to the to the printed uh, bottom plates and then cure that and once that's done we'll we'll trim it with a razor and get a nice clean edge that matches the perimeter all right this glue up has been under uh, some clamping weight for two hours i'm gonna take the weight off and should be good enough to go to the next step which is also going to be clamped and glued So it's looking okay. So we'll add a layer of the, the shelf liner. Oh, we've got our little feet there and they sit nice and flat. All right, so to attach the shelf liner, I'm going to have the, the smoother side up. And I'm going to use the, um, the case here to kind of just know where the perimeter is. So I know I can reference loosely where to put a little bit of water to help with the glue. So I can just feel out where the edge is. This does not have to be very precise, but I'm just trying to have some water available. Basically on the perimeter. And then I'll do another line of glue. And I have removed one of these, so if, if 
I do need to make a repair or something. It's it's not the end of the world. So bubbly side down. I just want to flip this so that it's within the shelf liner. Put some pressure on it. I've got the paper towel below. And now I'm going to try to put some weight on it without shifting it around. So just try to place that straight down. And that's the right side. I'll do the left side. I need to just mirror the uh, the outline of the case here. So I'm going to use the the other side of that. thought about you know M M3 screws or M2 screws or you know different kinds of mechanical fasteners and it's just everything's just too small at this scale and I, too thick I wanted low profile so I generally hate adhesives and glues and uh, try to avoid them in all my DIY stuff but um, sometimes there's just nothing nothing better so I've been happy with the glue so far for this. That's why this is pr pragmatic. All right, we'll let that glue here at least two hours maybe more all right this glue should be ready at least ready enough keep going looks all right looks all right cardboard here to trim this up.
right, so I just wanted to show, here's the little travel case that I printed. And again, this comes straight from Ergogen, which is so cool. Um, the, the STL file is just ready to print right out of Ergogen. So I, I can put these back to back in the travel case. This is a little tight. Um, I think if I were to do this again, I need a little bit more clearance there, but they fit. Um, and they have a lid and they don't rattle around. Um, so it's good. Getting them out, eh, it's all right, but I, I, it probably came out a little bit snugger than perfect. But so all this needs really um, is some keycaps um, and it's ready to go.